Well, I'm happy for you. Thanks. You should be proud. You worked. Uh, you worked really hard, and uh, you studied really hard. And yeah, that's... You, you got an average score, but apparently that's that enough to get into fucking law school. <laughs> I got an above, like slightly above average score, but for Drake, that's like the above average score is the average score. Um, yeah. Hey, JR. So yeah, the shit was wild. Well, and I, so I pranked my bosses on it too, because today's the last day to RSVP for the wedding. So we've been getting a lot of people RSVPing. So I've been getting email notifications like, oh, so-and-so RSVP'd for your wedding, whatever. And I just got back to the office for lunch and I open up my email and the email is the email address is law dash admit at drake.edu or whatever. And so you open it and it says, you know, please find attach your offer of admission to Drake law school for the fall semester. Congratulations. And I, there's like four attachments, one, um, the admit letter to the scholarship letter, and then, you know, a couple other odds and ends. So I open it and I have to read it like four times. I was like, full ride. I was like, okay. Uh huh. A full That's ride. So cool. Okay. And then I accept, I hear, in, like, I accept that it's a full ride. And I all of a sudden just like throw my hands down on the desk. I was like, Dan, I think like I opened something on my computer I wasn't supposed to open. Like, I think I might, I think this might be a virus or like I downloaded something wrong. I don't know. And so Keith, who worked in tech for like years and years, gets up and he's like, What's going on? So he comes over to my computer and he sees it. And then Dan comes over and he oh. sees it. And then everyone in the office is just crowded around my computer looking at like my law school admissions letter that says I'm getting a full ride. And then it was just like, now what do we do? Like, we were just like, oh, uh, okay. I know, but, but at least one of them, uh, you say Keith? Yeah. The tech guy, he was at least probably thinking like, Okay, is this a scam? You know, he's still processing right. the scam element. Like, let me look at the email. Let me look at the uh, HTML on that email. Yeah. So they're gonna take me out for drinks tomorrow. But I called Tyler right after because I kind of had to sit down and be like, "Fuck, this is really happening." Like, it's one thing to get into law school. That's cool. But it's a second of like, law school is fifty thousand dollars a year. I would have graduated with 200 grand in debt Ugh. easily. And you're already like, what? 50 some in debt. Yeah. My bosses have six figures in debt. Yeah. Damn near every law school. I know every law student I know has six figures in debt. So like, what? I just was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe I just forgot, but I didn't realize you were applying for a scholarship on it. Yeah, so it is a public service scholarship, which essentially means that my focus when I graduate law school and become a practicing attorney, if I pass the bar, will be in the public realm. So it could be like pro bono work or like if you're a public defender for this state. In my case, I would be doing criminal defense work, but I would also work um, juvenile cases. So like children in need of assistance, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, for I applied specifically for this scholarship offered at Drake. But here's the fucking kicker. Are y'all ready for this? I can still get more scholarship money because I applied for other scholarships. Hmm. So my entire tuition is paid right now, but I can still get more money. <laughs> but how would that work if you're already getting it paid? They're not going to give you a plus. They're not going to give you money. People... There are people who literally get paid to go to law school. Like they apply for so no many grants shit. and so many scholarships that they're making fucking bank going to law school. Like, hmm. so one of the organizations that I was a part of in Drake at Drake called Crew Scholars was for, um, you know, like students of color, but, 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 but anyway, my senior year, they developed a partnership with the law school and it's any crew scholar past or present that gets admitted to Drake Law School gets at minimum $10,000 a year. Oh. So, so you're guaranteed 10 grand. Yeah. And that's after my tuition is paid. So I didn't realize you could do that where you get your scholarship A takes care of your all your shit, your tuition whatever. And then you also qualify for scholarship B. They give that to you. And so obviously and I I don't know how scholarships work. Do they just send you a check every month? And you do so, with it toward you put it towards tuition, or does the tuition bill go to them and they? How's that work? Some 
some do. So depending on like which scholarships you apply for, um, some will just send you a check. Others will send it directly to the school and then you just get a refund. So. Okay. There's that. Yeah. Thank well, you, Shay. She said you're going to be amazing for juvenile work, man. Well, if you do criminal defense, I will hold off on my murdering spree until you're an actual lawyer. And then I you. will hire you. you. That would mean a lot. Yeah. If you could also hold off on abusing any children. Well, let's not get crazy here. Doing crack in front of the children, you know. Okay, what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm only one man. <laughs> Just love crack. So that's yeah, uh, that was so you could theoretically how many scholarships did you apply for? So um well I applied for a completely separate from Drake one that's fifteen thousand. Um I applied for the financial needs scholarship at Drake, the diversity scholarship at Drake, and then my like crew scholars minimum 10 grand. And that's mm -hmm. minimum, bitch. They could be like, let's give Nadia more. You know, that's because that comes, the crew scholars thing comes from a completely separate entity. It's within Drake, but it's its own thing. You know what I mean? Um, so uh. Shay said, I'm going to start throwing elbows the minute you pass the bar. Yes, bitch, we're going to get you a nice little deferred judgment. Yes, that'll be nice. <laughs> so you are you are going to get $10,000, right? Think so. And that's per year. That's a fucking, that's per year. So boost. you're going you're gonna to make $20,000. You're going to pay $20,000 to go to law school. At, I'm going right to get now. paid. I'm going to get paid. That's 20, what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Your, your tuition, your $100,000 of two years of tuition is covered. You're going to get $20,000 on top of that. Well, it's three years, so. Oh, is it three years? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and when do you find out about these other scholarships? So they will send me, so today was just like the, hey, you got accepted. Also, hey, full ride, lit. And then they will send me the formal, like, acceptance packet with, hmm. like, they put, like, little swag in there and whatnot. Um, and that will detail, like, all of your scholarships. Because when you apply, there are scholarships that you're automatically considered for um really is yeah. that just a drake thing no that happens a lot with law. even undergrad oh, law apply, school. oh undergrad too even undergrad you apply and you're automatically considered for different scholarships um so yeah man it's fucking nuts i it's it's weird i'm gonna read my personal statement to my bosses tomorrow when they take us out when they take me out for drinks because your personal statement is what the what the law school people see first it's essentially you saying like why you're interested in law whatever um and my I, my bosses are in it i wrote about they're in my Kiss personal ass. statement so, so you know. um backing up a little bit i don't recall you expressing interest in law back in the day is it this just came about from working at the law firm right well so i had always considered going to law school um oh, so because it's always been there so if you remember from my very early days on the show people did not like me because i talked about politics a lot yeah yeah um and i minored in sociology in college which is the study of society and why society is fucked basically um so i was always interested in law school it didn't seem like something i really wanted to do and i was very content doing radio i liked that a lot um you know obviously radio we got fired and a lot of people didn't know because I never posted anything about it, but I started working at a criminal defense law firm. And I thought early on when I worked there, I was like, oh yeah, I, I could take the LSAT, go to law school. And then I kind of just put it on the back burner because I was still looking for other jobs. Um, and then it kind of hit me one day after like another shitty interview with a radio company. I was just like, I don't think radio is going to be the same anymore. And I don't want to end up in this same position another five years from now. So I sat and I talked to Keith, who's one of my other bosses. And I said, I think I need to go to law school. Yeah. <laughs> he was, and he was like, why? And I was like, I, I was like, I can't, I can't go back into radio. Like, it's just, it's not feasible right now. And it's, I don't want to have to move. I don't want to have to do all of that stuff. And I was like, but I'm smartish. I'm smart enough. I can read, I can write well, like, I should just go to law school and he was like it's gonna suck the first year and I said yeah I know but I've been through worse and they were like okay why, so, is, it, why is it gonna suck the first year 
the first year is awful the first Why? year is when they try to weed out everybody oh um like it's extremely challenging you're not even allowed to have a job your first year um like literally you cannot have a job is that my, drake's law school or is that just law school in general that is so when my one boss daniel went there they you had to sign a contract saying you would not work hmm. that's how intense it is it is exhausting it is ridiculous it is demanding it is it's a lot um hmm. but i did have a couple advantages in applying for law school in that i'm classified as a non-traditional student i didn't i'm not going straight from undergrad to law school and some people like that because hmm. you've had work ex you know you've had work you lived experience. a little bit you worked you've yeah. been in the world a little bit and it's like you've had enough time to think about this and know it's something that you really want versus you just being like i'm a robot in undergrad i'm i'm done with undergrad i'm now going to go to law school you don't give yourself time yeah. to process or really you know or really ensure that it's something that you want to do so um but yeah that's uh interesting nadia gets into law school on a full ride man so Fucking nuts. when do you start law school august 22nd is my first day at school this august yeah three weeks after my wedding Ah, oh, jeez. And so you're going to be done. You're probably not going to work at the law firm then, right? I can do part-time. Like, they were like, we'll have you do research stuff. Um, so I'll be part-time there, just kind of as needed. Hmm. But other than that, it's going to be like full-on, full law school shenanigans. So. Well, amazing balls. Some would say amazing balls. Some would say. Yeah, I had to reread that letter like, nine times i was like y'all sure <laughs> yeah well i mean congratulations again it couldn't have happened to a better person you've worked hard and you're smart and you will do i think really well i think it's Thanks. uh you know you're pretty stupid in a lot of places but uh i think that's true i think in the law you'll do really <laughs> well now kidding. i can unblock you from seeing me post on facebook <laughs> Oh, thank you. I was gonna, I was gonna text Jody. I was gonna call her, but I was like, no, she's probably at dinner with Moose. And if I call Jody, Moose is gonna be like, why is she calling Jody? So she I said, like, I text Jody the news. She said, yay, that's awesome. Congratulations to her. Ah, uh, thanks, Jody. Yeah, Ryan texted me. Just fuck yeah, all caps. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, you could represent his kid uh, in a malpractice suit against whoever whatever bike he was on when he broke his leg true yeah, and you I'm mentioned you mentioned radio another example of why radio sucks big fat juicy ding dongs is uh i Heart radio just went through a round of layoffs again i think i saw that and mm. i was like damn that sucks <laughs> yeah and and one of the guys laid off i just happened to see it in the all access so just it was a guy i reached out to about maybe doing voiceover imaging for his radio station and we kind of chatted a little bit because there are some, you know, paths crossing type of situation. And that was a couple of years ago. And I reached out to him. I was like, dude, so sorry. You know? Yeah. It's, but, um, yeah. it's definitely changing and not for the better. Um, so. <sighs> no, it's, um, and the, the whole, and there was a post on a Facebook group I'm a part of. It's like radio production and imaging. Mm. And somebody posted how they were let go from a saga station in Charlotte, I think it was, oh. and yeah. how they posted the job posting was essentially you'll be the production director for like seven stations and oh Jesus, and, and you'll probably voice track this shift on the weekends and it's like just kind of how Saga rolls. For those who don't know, Saga is the parent company of the station we work for. Right. Uh, they, uh, you know making more people uh, less people do more and probably exactly. not probably not compensating them for shit but anyway you won't have to worry about that you don't have to worry about it you'll be uh representing one of those assholes in some criminal defense yeah because... there's been a couple of our listeners that i've seen on the polk county inmates page i'm like oh <laughs> he wants either tickets once <laughs> yeah oh hold it whoopsies um, I want to, did you see, all right. So this tombstone story is pretty interesting. And, um, I have not seen it. I saw it on the prep sheet and was like, 
I'm I'm going to let Moose tell me this story because I enjoy surprises. There's a tombstone at a cemetery in uh, uh, Polk County. Uh, Warren Power Cemetery in Polk County. It's got a hidden message. So if you write, it's forever in our hearts until we meet again. Cherish memories known as our brother, father, papa, uncle, friend, and cousin. So this was the headstone of Stephen Owens. But if, okay. you space, if you pay special attention to it, the first letter of each phrase reads, fuck off. Yeah, it's an acrostic poem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's and funny. And I'll pull up the little screen grab from uh, KCCI's website. But, uh, you know, they talk to uh, the daughter and the son of Stephen and uh, the decedent. And uh, I'm going to get it. Uh, <laughs> fuck off <laughs> and they said that's who he was like if he didn't like you he didn't talk to you and he was you know he didn't suffer fools or whatever uh, but that's uh, hilarious yeah you can't they blurred it out but let me just which why like i doesn't explicitly say fuck off it just says those are just letters that's the thing is it's it's not there unless you're looking for it Right, and now that everyone's looking for it, they're like, well, we gotta bleep it out just to be sure. And you, I guarantee you, you walk by that headstone on your way to Grammys, you wouldn't, you wouldn't bat an eye. You just like, you just look at the marbling, maybe the flowers, yeah. the name, and that's it. Unless it said very explicitly, just Owens, fuck off. Right, right. If it was in big, bold letters, the words fuck off, okay, right. but... You know, this is like a clever little thing. It's representative of who Stephen was, I guess. And so the cemetery is kind of throwing some stank at it. I think there's some other people who are like, mm, that's not appropriate. It's like, you know, this isn't like, you don't have He's to dead. go. dead. <laughs> well, you don't have to look at it. You, you, nobody's right. forcing you to look at it. And I guarantee you that the foot traffic there has been through the roof over the last couple of days, I'd imagine. You know, everyone's like, let's get buried here. What I, what I would like to know, and maybe it's in the article, actually, and I scroll down, is when he died. So, like, how long has this been sitting there with right. nobody giving two shits about it? And then one person walks by and goes, oh, that's the oh. fuck off. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I, I need to know who noticed that. Who was Many the one? Have found their final. Yeah. Here, who play. resting place in the Warren Power Cemetery in Polk County. Each tombstone reads something different. Some even with hidden messages like this one for Stephen Paul Owens. His reads. Forever in our hearts, until we meet again, cherish memories known as our son, brother, father, papa, uncle, friend, and cousin. If you look a little bit closer at the first letter of each phrase, you'll see the stone reads F off, a phrase Owens' family members share he often said jokingly. It was definitely a, his term of endearment. Um, if he didn't like you, he didn't speak to you. Um, it's just who he was. You easily riled up. Yeah. And, uh, it was always a kind of a I don't know, a goal of some sort to get him to tell you to, <laughs> yeah. to do this. It's something his family did as a harmless way to remember him, and it's been called into question by the cemetery. Cemetery staff say they've been against the headstone from the beginning. They say the profanity has no place where loved ones are laid to rest for eternity. Now, the family is hoping they don't have to get rid of the gravestone, while some may find it offensive. The family says that wasn't their intention, and they hope others can find humor in it. Unfortunately. Just change the U and until to an O and call That's it just good. That's so annoying. Like, it has no place being here where people are dead. Okay, well, he's dead, so fuck off. I'm with, I'm with him. I'm yeah. with Kevin. Fuck off. I don't, yeah, I it just, it's, it's, it's not, not blatantly obvious. It's not like when you pull in the cemetery, they say, signs to the Owens gravestone over this way. Go this yeah. way for Owens gravestone. It's like. Who's looking for that except for his family, except for the people who care about him, right? Signs to fuck off, Bill. Right. I just, it just, it just seems like a non-story. Just, this is, what is this, 1985? Who cares? Like, the amount of times I hear people say fuck a day, like, let's relax here, guys. Yeah. Let's relax. No, it just seems like, I, I don't know. I mean, I get if if it was, you know, something like a, some titties engraved on the tombstone and some hand squeezing them or something. But here's the thing. The the cemetery allowed it to happen. They allowed it in. I imagine right. 
I don't know what the vetting process is, if there is one, you know. You think there'd be something in place so that they don't get a, you know, 2,000 pound stone put in their, you know, their plot, semi permanent, that has, you know, a picture of Wiley e. Coyote masturbating on Roadrunner's chin, you know? Right, 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 right. 